Hello folks, my name is Rick Pearson and this is Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. Join us today for part two of our interview with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn as we unveil the hidden mystery of the Josiah Manifesto. Stay tuned and you are there. Now, now, something that I found really fascinating in your book was that you said that Amy Colbert Barrett played a huge part of the mystery in the Josiah Manifesto. Can you explain that to viewers? Yes. Um, yeah, there's one part of the Josiah Manifesto is called the Child of the Nile. And, you know, the very first war against, against babies that we know of was in Egypt, when they said, we're going to throw all the Hebrew babies, the males, into the Nile. And they did. And one of them was also put in the Nile, but he survived. And that was Moshe or Moses. Moses would grow up to end up, he would be the one to break the power of that was going to kill him and his generation. And it's interesting when you look at the story of Moses and Exodus, there's a real connection because what was the first plague? It was blood, the Nile turning blood, where they put the children, where they killed the children. Yes. And what was the last plague? You know, they tried to kill the the sons of Israel, the last plagues are the sons of Egypt, you know, so it's, and so here you have the man, you have the child of the Nile who's going to be killed. He's the one God uses to overturn the whole thing. So does America have a child of the Nile? And the answer is yes. A child who was born in the midst of the slaughter, that initial slaughter, a child who is, who is, who could have been killed, but survives a child who is, who then, well, let me say that the, the child is a she, and her name was Amy. And she was born right in that critical three-year period of, of, the, of a, the beginning of abortion. When she was born, Roe versus Wade has, had entered the Supreme Court. And she was born right in the middle of its two hearings. And so she ends up growing up. And then the American Jehu, who's got to pull down the Temple of Baal, Roe versus Wade, is the one who lifts up the child of the Nile to go to the Supreme Court. He's the, she's the last one. She's going to be the deciding vote because it would be overturned by one vote, only one vote. And it would be her. She was the last one. She was number three just at the end of his presidency. He just got her in. And that was the deciding vote. And she's the first one to come to the Supreme Court who was born when it was legal to kill her by the Supreme Court. This was the Supreme Court's sin, you know, and she is born under that. And then she comes to the Supreme Court, like, you know, and she comes to power in that. And, you know, she casts the vote. When does she cast the vote? When she reaches her 50th year, her year of Jubilee. That is when mm -hmm. the child of the Nile casts her vote. And you think about this because also, you know, we, we mentioned about all this mystery of these three years that this plague is striking, you know, down the old, the generation that legalized Roe versus Wade, you know, and it's, you know, and, the, and sparing the young overwhelmingly. Well, well, she would not ever, this would never have happened if something else didn't happen. And that was if another Supreme Court justice was passed from the earth, which was Ruth Ginsburg who was totally pro-abortion, and she actually tried to do, do a case at the time of Roe versus Wade that she thought would legalize abortion. And so she goes, and, and the younger one, the one who was, who was under it, who was under that sin, who was going to, who could have been killed as a baby, first one, she's the one who will overturn it, who will cast the vote. Theological seminaries have inundated churches preaching that America is not in the Bible. Prophecy teachers have regurgitated for years that America is not in the Bible. But what does the Bible say? Prophecy USA is proud to present a 30-page brochure filled with scripture, debunking the biggest lie keeping the body of Christ in darkness today. America is fully detailed in scripture over 53 times, and now we want to put God's word directly into your hands. America's role in Bible prophecy is rapidly being fulfilled and her judgment is coming. For a gift of $15 plus shipping and handling, we will send you this amazing brochure. For a gift of $50, we will send you five brochures. For $100 or more, we will rush to you 10 brochures. 
And for a ministry gift of $500, we will send you both our books, The Hour That Changes Everything, and The Coming Exodus, plus 20 brochures for your friends, family, and relatives. Call today. So the, the Jubilee comes like a, like a two-edged sword. There's blessing and judgment at the same time. Yeah, because just, it depends what side of you're on in the Jubilee. Because yes. if, if, you are, if you are on the side of the one who lost and something was taken from you, you get it back, you get blessed. If you were the one who took it and it, it doesn't belong to you, it's taken from you. And so you, you, it's exactly right. It's exactly right. And before I get before I get to like the the next holy, holy day, um, that that was revealed that neck shaking. Let me tell you one good thing about another holy day that I didn't mention. If you go to the book of Esther, you'll see there's a day that's decreed by Haman that yes. for death and destruction of the Jewish people, and it the date. Is it's linked to Adar 13. If you look in the book of Esther, Adar, Adar 13 is the, is the 13th day of the 12th month. So the 13th day of the 12th month is linked to a decree of death and destruction. Roe versus Wade was got its here, Supreme Court hearing was December 13th, the 13th day of the 12th month, the day of the decree of death and destruction. But in the book of Esther, you have there's a second decree that is given by Mordecai and Esther to undo and nullify the first decree. So you in America, you have another you have another case that's going to nullify Roe versus Wade, which is Dobbs versus Jackson. So it so yes. now the day that the Bible says that the second decree that's going to nullify came out was Sivan 23 on the Hebrew year. Sivan 23 actually that day that day Rick became a day that Jewish people pray every year for God to undo evil decrees. So now the thing is, Dobbs versus Jackson was sent to the Supreme Court on June 15th. But on the Bible's calendar, it was sent on Sivan 23, the day of the decree that will overturn and nullify the evil decree. Of the, and so here is the very decree. It's going to overturn Roe versus Wade, goes forth on the day of the decree that is appointed to overturn the evil decree of death and destruction, which came out on the 13th day of the 12th month, just like in the book of Esther. Okay, so that's, that's I'm throwing that in. Now, that now we, we left off, we had Passover, we had the plague and lockdown, then we had Shavuot, Pentecost, we have the fire, then what's the next time? The next thing comes at the end of the, by the way, that Shavuot, Pentecost ushers in the summer, it's the harvest, you know, well, we had a harvest of fires and rage and chaos, summer of rage. At the end of the summer comes the next holy day. It's the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets, for the Jewish people, it is so the sounding of the shofar. It's about judgment. It's called Yom Hadin, the Day of Judgment. Jewish people got to, you know, they say we got to get right with God. It's repent. It, it ushers in the ten days of repentance. We got to get right. But they view the, fe the 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 Feast of Trumpets. The Jewish people, the, the belief is that God is going to judge, and he so he as the judge of the universe in the High court of heaven, he ordains everything that's going to happen according to his judgment. So it's like, get right with God. Get right with God in, the, in, in these days. And so it's all about a courtroom. The, the, it's, they, the, the rabbis called it the heavenly court of God and the judgment. So all eyes turn to the courtroom. Well, as it comes, all of a sudden, all, something happens to the court, the high court of America on the day of the high court of God. And it, and it kind of God saying, listen, you're not the high court. I'm, I, I am over the high court. You're not the judge of the universe. I am. And remember, the Supreme Court is the court that legalized abortion. So it's a sin yes. of the Supreme Court. Now, now, the Feast of Trumpets begins the days when you're supposed to repent of your sin. So now it goes to the Supreme Court. And something happens that turns all the eyes, not just the Jewish people, but the whole nation on the high court of America. And that is the on the day of the Feast of Trumpets, that is the day that the judge, Ruth Ginsburg, passes from the earth. And that that event alone, that very event is going to open the door to the repenting of the Supreme Court to undo the sin of Roe versus Wade. On the day that begins the day to repent and the day that God shows that he's judged, not man. 
Is that the day of turning that you re, that you say in your book, the day of turning? It's got it's going to lead to the right into the that's the next one. It's going to lead into the day of turning. I mean, it it is the it begins the days of repentance. So it is a nation is to repent from its sins. Israel is to repent. So yes. now this is going to lead America to to turn away from its sin of Roe versus Wade and the Supreme Court itself on the very day, on the very day that's appointed for that. But then within the next 10 days, the 10 days are called the days of, of teshuva, the days of repentance. But one of those days is called, well, let me, let me put it, let me put it this way. That year, this one, I was actually, I, I witnessed this firsthand. God, his grace gave me a, 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 a the chance to be part of this. I was led with someone else, with a man named Kevin Jessup, to call for a national day of prayer and repentance. It was called the Return, and we all gathered in Washington on the National Mall, and and many, mil, actually millions, were watching and taking part around the country and the world. And it was it was it was to pray for to intercede if my people, you know, and and turn and and to intercede for the sins of America and for mercy on America. And and we prayed specifically for the overturning of Roe versus Wade for abortion. Um, I, I was actually led to take a, 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 a clay jar to Washington and on, on the yes. stage, I smashed it. And that's but, you know, when Jeremiah did that, when he was looking over the Valley of Hinnom about all the children who had been killed. And so it all goes back to that. So so the thing is, we didn't know this, Rick. And that is that that the day that we chose for the day of the return turned out to be a, another Hebrew holiday. I mean, it was not one that people think about, but it's one of the 10 days of all. It's called Shabbat Shuvah. And which basically means the day of the return. So we have the return, the day of the return, on the day of the return, without even knowing that it was the day of the return that God ordained. You know, you don't have to know what you're doing. You just have to know who's doing it. You know. So I was so, there. Wow, I, I was there. That. I watched it. Oh yeah. my goodness, I didn't know that. I did not. Yes, know that. we flew in from Canada. I flew in wow. from Canada, and Phil Durstein flew up from Florida. And oh we goodness. were there when you smashed that. And I remembered reading that in Jeremiah. Yeah. And you smashed that. In, and you said, if America doesn't turn back, yep. it's it's bad, yeah. bad news. It's judgment. Yeah. We have to yeah. return. Yes. And I, I, you know, I, I, you know what? I didn't realize you were there, but then I, they just came back yes. that there was something in the notes. That's awesome. And that, but the other thing is, if you remember, Rick, here's the other thing. Well, at the same time, Trump, the president, chooses that chooses for the day to, he's going to set in motion the overturning of Roe versus Wade by setting in motion that the critical vote, Amy Barrett, child of the Nile, that's going to overturn Roe versus Wade. He chooses the that day, the day of the return of the turning that's appointed for the turning of a nation. It also means the day of the turning. He he doesn't know it, but he has the same day. So, and by the way, that could never happen if eight days before Ruth Ginsburg didn't pass from the earth. So you know, nobody, this is the sovereignty of God. And the, the other thing, Rick, if you remember, on that day at the end, at the end of the, the prayer time at five o'clock, I said, we're going to seal all this. And I said, though, everybody yes. who has a, has a shofar come up. And I said, when you hear the sound of the shofar, then shout, the shout of Jericho. So I said, we, this is the moment, sealing. So we, I said, we seal all these prayers. I said, let the power of God go forth. And I said, go. And they, you remember it, they sounded it. And you could see this on day. They sounded it and everybody shouted at that same moment. At the White House, Trump, the Jehu, is standing next to Amy Barrett, the child of the Nile, and he is about to set in motion the overturning of abortion, of Roe versus Wade. He opens up his mouth. Now, he opens up his mouth at five o'clock, four minutes, and 33 seconds. On the National Mall, when we prayed, and we had the trumpets, and we said, we're sealing it all, and I said, go, and the trumpet and the shout, it was five o'clock, four minutes, and 33 seconds to the exact second, Rick. And the other thing is how God is. And if we were, if you, you know how many speakers there were and people leading, it was like 150. If any one of them went yes. one second too long or one second too short, it would not have happened. And the other thing is that, you know, I'm saying, Lord, you know, that was great. I said, because I don't know how many people are going to be coming up to blow the shofar. I said, it was good. We had six people. I said, that was good, Lord. I, I would have liked seven. You know, I would like seven, you know, like, like Jubilee. And then it hit me, wait a minute. No, there was the seven. What is the name of the president? The name, his name in English is, his name is Trump. It means trumpet in English. So what he was the seventh trumpet. You had, and when I said go, the trumpet sounded and the trump sounded at the same, the same second. God is amazing. 
Hello, folks. Karen and I would like to personally thank you, our prayer partners, and our monthly supporters, who are helping us spread God's word concerning America's role in Bible prophecy. In order to help you reach friends and other loved ones with this teaching, please listen to this very special message. In these end times, it is more important than ever to reach the lost. That's why Rick and Karen Pearson have assembled all of their teaching into this powerful study kit. For a gift of just $200 plus shipping and handling, Prophecy USA will send you a free study kit of five books, five study guides, and a DVD teaching aid discussing each chapter. Or for a gift of just $375 plus shipping and handling, you will receive a free study kit of 10 books, 10 study guides, and two DVD teaching aids. Call today at 1-888-306-1759 or visit us online at prophecyusa.org to send your gift and begin sharing these important prophetic teachings. Uh, you say that the Jubilee redemption, it's par, it's, it's par judgment and it's also redemption. The Bible says, if my people will humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land. Five verses later, he says, but if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I've set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them, and this house. And this house, which is high, shall be astonishment to everyone that passes by it, why hath the Lord done this unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers. Could it be right now as we enter in, there's the darkness in America and the light is being separated right now. Yeah, yeah. Could, could it be that both judgment and revival could happen at the same time, just like the two sides of redemption? Yeah, well, if you this goes to the heart of of the book, and I will, I will I, and it goes right into this because you know all these mysteries come together, and there's so many more mysteries we won't be able to get into, but I want to get to this. Um, but it all comes down to that day when when you know, well, let me put it this way: the the most brazen colossal altar we have in America was Roe versus Wade. It allowed us yes. to kill 60 million children on it, sacrifice it. On June 24th, 2022, God broke the altar. And that's why when you look, just I'll, I have a copy. When you look at the book, you see this here. This is a, yes. a broken altar being bro broken in the middle. That's the sign. That's a biblical sign. And people, did, you know, they, they many people missed it. This was a colossal sign. It's never happened before in America. And the thing is that in the Bible, the sign of the broken altar is, is gigantic. It, it comes when, you know, when Israel fell away from God. And God raised up a righteous king, and he and the king, if he was going to lead the nation to revival, he broke the altars of the gods on the high places. It was a sign of revival. You know, you know, today it might be a tent meeting or you know a church service, but back then it was a it was a a a all the breaking of the altar. So this is a sign of revival. <clears throat> so, but it's also a sign of judgment too, because <clears throat> here's the it, it's exactly what you're saying. <clears throat> it could be both. It could be one or the other. Number one, or it can be both at the same time. You can have judgment and revival, or you can have one or the other. But the point is, we're at the we're at the sign. More than any other person in the Bible, the, the sign of Josiah. I'm sorry, the sign of the broken altar points to the man called Josiah. Josiah, his birth was prophesied over a broken altar. He's the one who actually broke, went down to the Valley of Hinnom and he ended those altars. He went all the, he broke the altars down to the gods. There were, by the way, you know, we, we are. So that what it's saying is, God, I believe God is giving us a message. We are standing at the Josiah moment, where on one hand, his nation was ready for judgment. It was about to be judged, as you, you are alluding to. But at the same time, God gave it a last chance for revival. And so you did have revival, and you also had judgment after that. But the point is that he used one man, Josiah. That what this, All these mysteries are coming together to reveal we are now standing at the Josiah moment. America but I would say Canada too. I would say the West. I would say yes, we are we standing are. at the Josiah moment. That is in between ready on judgment on one hand or revival on the other. And, but, you know, if you don't have revival, you're going to have judgment. And the thing is that, as you said, you can have both. But the point is, here we are right at that moment. Yes. And so and so why that what that opens up is Josiah, in the time of Josiah, the culture, by the way, was given to sexual immorality, 
the killing of children, gender confusion, the persecution of believers, all that. And guess where we are now? And so, and yet one man, you know, this is one man God used who was all sold out for God, who literally turned the course of history of his nation for an entire generation. As long as he was alive, there was no judgment. And he literally turned yes. them back. And, and he has, and so the last hundred pages, that's why you see this on. All these things lead up to this. And then from this, the, the broken altar comes the Josiah, literally the manifesto or the blueprint or the guide. And that's what, what were the secrets of Josiah that he could live in such a time like as we live in or the end times. And yet he stood, he prevailed, he overcame, he, he actually prospered. What were the secrets of Josiah? What was the strategy of Josiah? What were the what were the powers of Josiah? And that and all those things, I believe God is is showing this is for now. This is for the believer where we are right now and for the end times. You live in a time of apostasy, that's what he lived in. You live in a time of darkness, idolatry, the spirits, yes. the gods, you live in you live in all these things, that's what he lived in. You live in a time where the government is more and more getting to the point of telling you to disobey God. That's the con that's the culture he was born into. What do you do? You know, how do you stand? So the last again hundred pages are what do we do? What 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 do we need to know to prevail? And it's all in basically what Josiah God raised up Josiah. You know, the Bible says there was nobody like him before or after, and that is what is called for the end times. There is hope. You know, my you know my books are. You know they're deep, as <laughs> you know they get into your know, warning and all they're those things. Deep. But I, I always have I always have hope at the end. But this one, this one, I was led more than any other to give. You know, I, I give the, really a hope for God's people. And the thing is that the other thing is that I'll tell you that a little kind of secret, and that is that there's more to this. But the day that God led me to write this book was the very day that I finished the Return of the Gods. That's never happened before. The day I finished the return of the gods, and I'm talking about the gods and the altars, you know, it was, yes. was June 24th. On that very day, God broke the altar of the gods of Roe versus Wade. On the day that I finished the book. And then the Lord basically said, you're now going to give, I'm now going to show you an answer. I'm going to show you the mysteries, but I'm going to, that for my people to know for what's coming. And by the way, when I say that, I didn't expect that, you know, because I wasn't looking, you know, young, going even starting with the, with what happened in Israel. But what but I said, what is coming and how to prepare and how to not only prepare, but stand and prevail. So so going forward now in America, do you see a revival coming or do you see a revival in the midst of persecution? What do you see coming in America? Well, well. well both of those options are revival, so I, I, li I like I like the exactly. revival. Now the, the third one is what if there's no revival? You know, um, I you know if I looked in the natural, I I I don't see a lot of great signs with the culture. You know, um, but if I look in the supernatural, God's never finished, and and God and when I look at these things, there is a ch real chance for revival. I mean, when I say revival, I don't mean in one church or a few churches. I mean, uh, uh, you know, a civilizational turning. But it may happen, you know, sometimes you know, revival can happen easy. It could happen hard. But I believe if it's going to happen, it's going to happen hard. Um, you know, I mean, yes. or it's going to happen in the backdrop of apostasy uh, and, and persecution. So so the thing is that, you know, I, I would say there we have three options. You know, one is revival, period. Two is no revival. Three is revival and, and, and then judgment. And the other, the other is revival in the midst of judgment, persecution, apostasy. Well, listen, I'm for any scenario that's going to give that's going to give revival. I don't want, you know, I pray, we pray. We don't want people to be judged. We want them to be saved. But the point is Absolutely. that there, there, there can be revival. And one of the things, the very last mystery, I won't go into it. There's something actually called the last mystery in here. And it is actually a, a manifestation that God, that I witnessed firsthand on the very first day that the, that the Jubilee in Cuba, when I sounded the shofar, when that all began, that night, something else happened. I won't go into it, but it was literally a manifestation of the book of Joel and the end time revival that's going to come. But the, and, and it's, I mean, it's it crazily amazing. But the thing is that 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 it came through. It says he in Joel, he tells you, listen, it, with repentance comes revival. You know, if, if there's no revival, you're not going to have if there's no repentance, you're not going to have revival.
In 2019, Prophecy USA showcased biblical warnings of the coming New World Order. In 2020, we warned you of their plans to use COVID-19 to accelerate that agenda. In 2021, we warned of the Babylonian spirits who are invading our nation to provoke curses upon the land emulating Sodom and Gomorrah. But what is next? Prophecy USA is proud to present The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. In this exciting book, you will discover where traditional theologians have missed the mark and why prophecy teachers have refused to acknowledge that America's role in Bible prophecy is rapidly being fulfilled. When you give a donation of $35 or more, you will receive The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. Or for a donation of just $60 or more, you will receive both books, The Coming Exodus and The Hour That Changes Everything. Call 1-888-306-1759 or visit us online at prophecyusa.org. Yeah. So my final question from a, from a, a, a rabbinical Jewish perspective, Based on the ancient pattern of Jubilee redemption, if God were to judge America, and you, you mentioned in a, in a single hour or in a moment, would he also provide a way of escape, just like when he used the Red Sea to judge Egypt, but at the same time provided an exodus for his people who Egypt was persecuting? If he was going to judge, he would provide his people a way of escape, would he not? Well, the thing is that he does, he, he, he does, he kept his people safe throughout that. The promise is God's never going to leave us. He's going to be with us. Well, good times are bad. Um, that doesn't mean we, we, we don't deal with some consequences. I mean, J Jeremiah dealt with the consequences of judgment. Paul, you know, went through a lot, you know, so it's, it's, it, but the point is that what, however he does it, he will, listen, here's the thing, no matter what day or age or judgment or not that happens, God has called us with a calling to be an answer, to be to be a Josiah, to be a Paul, to be an Elijah, to be a Moses, to be to be to be the light. No matter what, that's one of the things about I believe in the manifesto. No matter what's happening, it doesn't matter. You're in the Soviet Union under that comment. You're in the, under Hitler. It doesn't matter. It doesn't stop the purposes of God. The purposes of God are not stopped through good or bad. And exactly. we are not on earth to just be reacting to what's going on. We are, Josiah was an active agent upon his culture. So we're not supposed to be just sitting back, okay, what are they doing next? How do we, how do we, you know, we are supposed to be acting upon it. We've got a job to do. Because greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. That's right. Folks, we hope you've enjoyed our interview with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Join us again next week as we go back to our normal format unveiling yet more mysteries of America's role in Bible prophecy. My name is Rick Pearson, reminding you that Jesus is alive and he's coming back much sooner than many people think. See you next week. Shalom.